Um, we all have seen Di Disney Channel, not Jason, Disney movies about princesses falling in love with their soulmate or their prince charming. But today we only have a 50 50 chance of actually having a happily ever after. My claim today is that pre marriage counseling such education strengthens the marriage. Um, I believe this because pre marriage counseling such education lowers the rate of divorces and that pre marriage counseling such education reduces interpersonal reduces interpersonal problems in the marriage. Um, first Pre-marriage counseling has a lowest divorce rate because there is an increased need for a greater knowledge and relationship skills for con contemporary marriages to succeed. There's also a study by Sandra Saren, um, PhD. She says that there were several, several years ago over 70 couples seeking premarital counseling utilized the materials. 56 couples ranging in the ages between mid-20s to mid-40s responded to a five-year follow-up survey. That the majority of these couples returned to the survey that is significant and that is beyond expectation. Of the 56 couples, 40 decided to marry, and 33 of the couples in the group remained satisfactory in their marriages. That occurs at 82.5% success rate. They have an excellent rating to the materials and the counseling experience. Of the seven, seven remaining couples who married, two divorced and five are in unstable marriages. Um, all regretted not heeding the warning signs that were given in the educational um, programs. And that seven individuals really stated that the values of the programs and materials and use what they had learned to select more um, better mates. Um, in these programs, they tell you what you need to look for, how to talk to your mate, and what to, to look for your mate, and how to do certain things. Um, the study, some studies suggest that couples who have, have premarital counseling have lower divorce rates than other couples, but you can't really say that it's Premarital counseling because they're different um, ways to measure the fact of their marriage being successful. Um, but couples who participate in premarital education or counseling generally enjoy happier marriages. Saying this, um, this goes to my second point that pre-marriage counseling such education reduces interpersonal problems. And in these programs, um, counseling gives a chance to enforce core relationship skills like assessing potential problems streaming from different views of money, the sex, and religion. Um, they openly discuss our views on love and on divorce. Um, it also defines and discusses expectations of marriage and finances of children, because these are major problems in marriages today that we do not go over what our main focus is on our ideals, why our partner could actually disagree in that. Um, we, the studies have found that we um, have an, that premarital education increased communication and lower conflicts. Okay. And then um, Scott Stanley, um, he is a counselor organizer. He conducted a survey in 2001 and found that 31% lower divorce rate among couples that have had counseling before marriage. And he also discovered that 44% of uh, couples married since 1990 had had counseling and, are far, and have a higher rate than among those who are married four or five decades ago. This concludes that pre-marriage counseling and education actually strengthens the marriage and actually has a rate of 31% of lowering the chance of divorces and that more successful marriages will happen.
All right. Well, I think you're rushing a couple of phrases in the proposition because I heard it three times and I couldn't tell exactly what it was that you were trying to claim. I know generally it's about premarital counseling and its impact on the success of marriage, but the phraseology just seemed awkward when you were presenting it, and I, I really thought that you were rushing it in a couple of spots. In the body of the speech, you're not rushing quite as much, but at the end of the speech, you start uh, zipping through again, and I think you get a finish line in, in sight and you are heading for that one in that last minute of the speech. So you need to pace yourself a little bit. There's also way too much reading that's going on in the presentation. Uh, it sounds like there's a structure in the presentation, although some of the supporting points really just sound informative in nature rather than making inferences. Uh, I, I did think, for example, that you had some data on the last point that seemed to suggest that this premarital counseling has a significant impact and it's a measurable impact, although earlier on another point, you sounded like you were poo-pooing some of the evidence. You, you kind of, in essence, are dissing that evidence and saying, well, we can't really reach that conclusion. So you're taking up what seem like contradictory positions on two of the different points in the speech, and I'm not sure why that is the case. And if they are different points, then that needs to be clarified. If it's the same point, then it's really confusing, and uh, that would be problematic for the audience. Um, in, the, in a few places you cite a couple of studies. Uh, one study early on in the first point uh, gives you some of your information, and then later on there's another study. I thought, for example, that, that you had this information in the last section that said 41% of people who've gotten married since 1990 have had some kind of counseling, and that marriage counseling reduces uh, divorces or uh, breakups of marriage by 31%. So we ought to be seeing some information based on the marriages that have occurred since 19. That suggests that the divorce rate is down or that marriages are lasting longer. And I was looking for some information to confirm that point. Uh, the study that you're presenting seems to reach that conclusion. I was just looking for some external information to support the same conclusion. All right, thank you.